Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Expert to Authority show. Uh, this is the show for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses while making an impact in the world. My name is Simone Vincenzi, and I'm your host. So every week, we'll come up with different episodes. Sometimes we have incredible guests, like today. Sometimes we show the behind the scenes of what we do in GTEx and also the work that we do with our clients. So then you can take inspiration and grow your business faster. And today is a special episode because we are going to talk about becoming an authority on video. And you know that video is everywhere. Video is a great tool for connecting, but if you're using it correctly, it can be an incredible sales tool as well. If you're not using it well, then uh, you break all the connection, you're not going to have the clients that you want, uh, and actually can backfire. So how can we stand out on video? That's uh, the conversation that we are going to, to have today with our special guest. But before we start, a couple of things. If you're new to the show, then welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other episode. And also, uh, we've been uh, offering as part of the show our webinar conversion kit because uh, uh, webinars are an incredible way, talking about videos as well, right? Webinars are an incredible way to get your message across, uh, to get in front of new audiences and immediately turn someone who is a stranger into a paying customer. And uh, I've been running more than, uh, well, I think I did more than 800 webinars by now. And we've worked with more than 300 clients helping them creating their webinars. So we have seen all the patterns. Uh, I've made all the mistakes. We've seen the things that works and they don't and the things that don't. And what we've done is to put the creme de la creme of everything you need to create a high converting webinar in our webinar conversion kit. You can find it at webinarconversionkit.com. So it's webinarconversionkit.com. And it will give you from the A to Z on creating a high converting webinar from filling it up to the email sequences, to the um, text message, if you want to use text messages, the presentation you're going to create, everything is there. So the link is webinarconversionkit.com and you can find as well the link in the show notes. Now, it is time to introduce my guest today and she's the creator of the Video Influencing System. She's a professional actress, sales pro and internet marketer who combined 35 e years of experience in these areas to help you strategically leverage video to grow not only your business's career, but to enhance your personal, personal life with more success. And today we are going to talk about becoming a video authority in midlife. So please welcome Suzanne Glover. Uh, welcome, Suzanne. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you, Simone, for having me here. It's a fabulous, fabulous time we're going to have together. I just know it. Ah, absolutely. So you have, I um, know we had a few conversations actually before coming on this show, and uh, you have a very interesting background, a very interesting career that then led you to do the work that you're doing now in video. So talk to, to us about where did your career started that, uh, and how did you get to this point? Okay, well, I'm going to condense it because I'm in my 60s, so it's kind of a long story. So I'm going to make it real short. I was a model back in the 80s when Cheryl Teagues was the model. And everyone said, hey, you look like Cheryl Teagues. You should be a model. So I became a model, but that was really short-lived because it's, you can't get old in the modeling world. So what I had to do, now this is what is... Um, relevant to what's happening today with people. What I had to do was I had to segue from being a model live, hourly, speaking in person, you know, being a model to getting on camera, which is exactly what's happening today for business. They have to speak in public for their business. They are fine with that, but then they have to shift to the camera and they're not fine with that. So what happened for me was I was a marketer. I've been marketing for I mean, 40 years, and um, I got my first little commercial, local spot, and um, my first gig, right? Talk in front of the camera, piece of cake, froze like a deer in the headlight when I had to talk to it the first time. And the, the director, I remember, he just, he just shook his head, like, what did we hire? And the crew's kind of looking around, this is expensive. And I, at that moment, that was the first moment of 35 years in front of this thing, where I had to dig deep and find something. 
And so I said, let's go. Did it again. They were happy. Something happened. And that commercial went on to becoming award winning. So I thought, okay, so that's what happened for me over years and years and years. I got a mentor, I got an agent because the thing that was the thing in the industry, and it still is, is you can't just play in the industry without being invited. You have to be, there are gatekeepers. You have yeah. to be invited. You have to be approved to be in it. Yeah. So I got the agent. I got the training because you weren't going to play in that field without any kind of training. People knew you had to be competitive. And there you go. So fast forward, I, I started, I got my, my commercials. I started getting success because I got a mentor to train me. She was in the industry. She was not an extra. She was not a makeup person. She was a person in front of the camera. And she was training people. So she had before it'd be in front of the camera and behind the camera. And she trained me and I started getting work. And then I started training for Screen Actors Guild. I had my own studio. So fast forward to now. Why am I doing this now? I love it. I love what I do. I, I love helping people with something that I've developed in myself for 35 years. Because as a salesperson, I took my sales skills, put it in front of the camera. As an internet marketer, I've applied that to this. So it's like a life thesis for me. And it's the number one challenge in business today. So there you go. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm cringing when I'm seeing people struggling with camera on for business. I, I totally get you. And um, I think that everyone, uh, no, I'm not generalized, not everyone, but a lot of people that uh, have not been trained on being on camera or they're not uh, natural as well. In uh, There are some people, you know, turn the camera on. I was like, where did that come from? And uh, other people, which is the majority, that really struggle. And I remember my first video that I did. Oh my God. I, I, it's not anymore on YouTube. It's down. It's down. It was, uh, I cringe when I look back at myself. On one side, you know, we all we all have a starting point, but it's not something that I want to put other people through. So <laughs> I feel for others when they watch that particular video. And so it took time to learn how to speak to camera, how to the, the energy and all the different elements that make the conversation with a lens interesting <laughs> for the people that then are going to watch it later. So what I'm curious to know from you is that, what was uh, the biggest challenge that you had? Because uh, um, while you were going through a training, uh, my assumption is uh, there were some things that you were doing uh, maybe after a while well, and others where you really had to work for it. So what were the, th the biggest challenges that you had personally? Uh, when, uh, yeah. Getting their attention. You see this camera, people can click away now. But back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, we had VHS tapes. Remember those, you know, VHS mm -hmm. tapes? Yeah. And the producers and directors, they would not be in the room when we were auditioning. They would watch the tapes later. So mm -hmm. the biggest challenge was they would sit there and fast forward and watch them. Oh, wait, wait, I want to see her. Oh, ugh. you know, and it was the exact same precursor to what people are up against today. Exactly. So true. I had to catch their attention. I had to keep it. And you see, the thing about acting is everyone thinks they have to act, but it's really drawing upon different parts of yourself. Mm -hmm. Everyone says, oh, talk to a friend. Well, that might not be the right voice for your message. It might not be the right attitude for your message. Many, many years of finding who I was supposed to talk to, um, it took work to find that. And it always changed, not always. In fact, I was in an audition. I'll give you an example. In an audition in the 90s, and here I was, I had to put my, I was supposed to pretend that I was putting clothes up on a drying, like a rack, like a clothes, clothes pin. No, where are you going to call it? Clothes line. Clothes line. Obviously, I don't clothes use line. one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a clothes line. And I was supposed to see my toddler there for the taking its first steps. I didn't have any children. And so here's what happens. And this is how it relates to what's happening out in the business world too. What usually happens is you either play it up like, oh, 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 you know, people get really fake. Oh, 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 it's awful. 
And that I had two choices. I could be fake because I wasn't really a mom or I could choose a certain entity to talk to and talk to that particular one for that instance. And I did, happened to be my cat at the time because I was her mom. And when that, you know, I just let it out. And when that camera lady turned off the camera, she turned back to me slowly. She said, you're an amazing actress. I thought, I am not acting. You see, it's not acting. It's finding slices of your own life to pull upon. And at that time, I didn't know there was a whole acting method attributed to that. But I'm not saying you have to learn a whole acting method to do this. I don't want you to think that. What you need to do is think, I don't need to act. I can be myself. I just have to find out what part of myself is the right part. So my biggest challenge was letting, finding out how I should communicate on this thing and actually get their attention. And it started working. As I developed, I got a mentor yeah. and it just started working. And then as I started teaching people, it even got better for me. As I started, uh, kept auditioning as I, after I started teaching people and I auditioned, my conversion, as you would say it, my audition, my callbacks all went up, my rates all went up because then I was studying it from a different perspective. So my challenge was applying it and getting to get noticed in this thing over and over and again, because I was against hundreds of people all the time. It's, it's really, hard. it's really interesting uh, where you mentioned like the first audition or the, the challenge of being capturing the attention of the people that are watching the tapes. And, uh, it's so true. I mean, I've been introducing all, earlier the webinar conversion kit and uh, you no, know, with webinars, you literally have the first uh, one minute, two minutes, maybe. maximum, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, on social media is even shorter. A webinar is something that people register for. So they are more invested. So they give you a bit more slack, they do. but on social media is uh, not even a second. I, I know, for example, you're looking at new media platform like TikTok or Instagram Reels uh, and uh, the power that now you know, is all video-based platform that takes your entire screen. You know immediately where you're scrolling down like this, uh, the one that is going to stop you and the one that is going to, mm, that, that you're going to scroll past. Yep, yep. And uh, it, it is uh, also interesting about the finding, as you mentioned, about accessing different areas of yourself because uh, i'm sure that you have seen a lot of people i definitely was one of them when i started where people kept telling me you know i see someone else i don't see you so if i'm having a conversation with you you're one person the moment the camera is on i can't see you anymore exactly and you want to know how many times sorry to interrupt you but that yeah. is the thing that happens and is very subtle sometimes yeah. you hit it you hit a button in me because somebody will be talking off camera and they'll be totally themselves and then they'll turn and they'll be a separate wife or a separate husband at a robot. That's how, sorry, how did you chime And I don't remember my wife, uh, um, uh, she used to tell me, you turn on the performer mode because that's my, that's my modality, you know? So I turn it up and then I'm like, hey, <laughs> welcome everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, when you have a conversation with someone, you're not, hey. <laughs> So <laughs> she used to tell me always, like, stop, stop the jazz ends. I, not that I was doing them, but the energy that I was bringing. And it was really hard. So the question I want to ask you is, that, why does it happen? Because uh, it either, happen? yeah, why does it happen? Because sometimes it happens, it goes in two different ways, right? Um, there is uh, the person who freezes or is super quiet, not engaging. So they tone it down so much that they lose it. Yeah the attention because of that yep. and there are the other people that turn the other way where yep. now they are the excited puppy and they lose the audience in that way so what yep. does this happen why does it happen because they there is a belief that they have to perform and i did it too um well i was really really bad hi 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 oh yuck you know um because i didn't feel good enough you just don't feel good enough there's several reasons for this to happen and it is different with everyone. The typical ones are, I don't feel good enough. I can't be myself because um, I'm not an actor or I'm not um, a spokesperson 
or I, I, I'm not one of those people on TV. And that's a big stigma. And I'll just say a little story behind that, how I realized that back in the 90s, I had done a commercial and it, I hadn't gotten the tape yet. So I watched TV all day because I knew it was going to be playing. It was that quick. It's a commercial for Christmas. And I watched TV, I just listened to it all day while I was working around. And I thought, oh, I know that person. Oh, I know that person. And I realized at that point that I knew the people on TV and I thought, oh, I'm one of them on TV. And that's when I thought, oh, it's us and them as seen on TV. It's like a stigma. And particularly for those of us who are over 40 in the midlife or maybe even 35, I'm not sure about that, but definitely over 40, we were not born with an iPhone in our crib and we were not okay. We were not on TV. It was a very small, when I started in this industry, it was very small click. Yeah. And it, I knew people because it was very small, but you had to get into it, you know, and most of the people, most of the world were not. So it's an us and them stigma that still is happening today. And particularly for women, we all think we're not good enough because society says, and I don't want to be on a soapbox. I'm just mimicking what is I'm hearing and I'm feeling. We're not young again. We're not young. We are not uh, respected. We're older. And my book talks about this for women a lot. We feel invisible after 50. I had an anti-wrinkle pill that I labeled and, and marketed. And I did a lot of research about how women age. And the, you know, the number one thing is they're afraid they're losing attractiveness. That's their number one fear. So you combine that with camera and a whole lot of stuff comes up. They're just not good enough. They can't be themselves. I'm not a performer. I can't do this. I'm overwhelmed. This is, this is an unnatural. I don't know how. And here's the last biggest reason. They're asked right now to become spokes, TV spokespeople overnight, but they're not getting the right kind of training. When I entered the field, I got training. I got good training. There wasn't some makeup artist. And I, I keep saying this because I've seen a makeup artist out there say, oh, I'll train you how to be on camera. And I'm thinking, oh, I can't even watch you. You know, and some extra guy who's saying, oh yeah, I've been on 20 films. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're an extra. And that is nothing to brag about because you don't even put that on your resume. And so the public can't know who to trust. Yeah. So they're not getting the right training. Yet all of a sudden they're thrown into it. And when I started, I had to get training, I had to get good training, I had discernment, I only had to become an actor. Not a tech, not a director, not a producer, none of that. Now, everyone has to be on camera, they have to become a spokesperson overnight, they have to know how to do the tech, the writing, the directing, everything. That's why it's a big deal. It's a lot, it's a lot. And as you mentioned, everyone is on TV right now, everyone. You are, you have your own TV, you have your own channel, you are broadcasting all the time and uh, you make an impression, whether you like it or not, that video that you're doing or that you're not doing, because also not doing a video because you are holding yourself back for all the reasons that you mentioned is making a statement. Absolutely. It's sending a message. The message is, I'm not out there. <laughs> That's the message that you're sending. A bad one is sending the message of my the, the quality that I will provide is not good because it's not reflected in the quality of the communication, the quality of the video. Well, a good quality, and it doesn't have to be, and I believe we are not talking about you know production videos. Where we, we can be like a, a talking on, on, on the phone, but having the right way of talking to that phone, even if you don't have a production company behind you, that's what's going to make the difference between someone trusting you or not. So Absolutely. The, the, the question I have for you now is uh, what are some of the, the mistakes that you see people making more often? Oh, uh, yeah. Because I'm sure that uh, you, you have a few that you've seen over and over again. Maybe you have made as well. So what are some of these mistakes? Some of the biggest ones. It's not taking this thing seriously. Flipping on your phone and just talking to it and not taking it seriously enough to, and I don't mean, you know, you don't necessarily have to train with me. There are people out there who are credible, but you need training in this medium. It is a medium that you need to take seriously. 
And what they, what I'm seeing people do is they're shooting themselves in the foot because they don't know the tricks of the trade. So they just flip on the phone and then they wonder why people are clicking away because they're not talking, they're not engaging. They're either too big or they're too small or, or they're not saying what's interesting to their audience. You know, they, they don't know what their audience wants to hear. That's a big mistake. Now, or they don't know who they're talking to. A lot of people don't know who they're talking to. And in video, it really makes a difference in video because you have to know what they're thinking while you're talking to them because they can click away in a heartbeat if you don't think like them. So mistakes so far, not taking it seriously, just getting flipping on the phone and saying anything that you think that you want to, them to know, saying too much, like a video should have one objective and one point, and that's it. Unless it's a webinar, of course, then it should have three. Okay. Exactly. Then you can expand it. <laughs> you can expand it on there. But uh, um, I, I agree with you. Totally agree with you. Uh, when, uh, in particular, if you are talking about using video for social media or for marketing promotions, you have that moment. The person is watching a video. You have no control of what they are doing what they're doing, where they are, what's their mental state, yeah. what they have in their mind, what's going on on their day. You have no yeah. control over that. So you might be putting all this work in this video, but what's getting someone to stop? And that's what I loved about what you said is really understanding what they are thinking. Not, who they, not even just who they, who they are. So you went a step further. So who they are, but what they are thinking. Be yeah, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. I had a literary agent one time, I don't know, 25 years ago, who said, you need to think like a reader, Suzanne. I said, oh, you need to think like a reader. You have to get yourself out of this and you have to think like a reader. So you have to think like a listener. I'm always thinking, are they listening or are they distracted with Facebook? Am I engaging them? What am I, what am I saying? Are these, am I using their language? Yeah. That's a copywriting trick that a lot of people have missed or or forgotten about you know when i did podcasts i don't know oodle, oodles ago years ago i was slepping some kind of personal development program and the term that came to me was personal development junkie i would never have used that term but as soon as i started using it boom people started relating to what i was saying yeah you see so not using their language and there is i'm going to tell you a story about um something about not taking this seriously and how it can shoot you in the foot because this is typical i talked to a guy on the phone and i signed up for his service he was great on the phone it was an online program type of situation he did a live webinar onboarded onboarding webinar he was so offensive i mean offensive he came across as arrogant he came across as very annoying so I canceled. He totally lost his credibility with me because he didn't know how to transfer whatever he had offline. He didn't know how to transfer that to this box here. And there are rules, you know, you want to have, for example, you want your head up in the top frame. You know, so many people are down here. It, it's, it's, it's a power thing you, you want. It, that's, like, that's like a basic photography thing. You want your head up, you want to be lit. Um, I had seen one guy who reached out to me on LinkedIn. He was selling some sustainability for corporations. He reached out to me. We booked a call. I said, sure, whatever. He wasted my time for an hour. He wasted his own time for an hour because I didn't even qualify. If he had put a video in front of that phone call to qualify me, we both would have saved an hour. But he was very into branding. So you corporate people out there, he was very into branding. He didn't even show up on his website. He had professional actors do the videos, period. You know what he showed up like on, um, on Zoom? I uh, like that. Turn, turning off the light, super dark. Saw about some glasses like this. Uh, you know, he had some glasses on that. Yeah. I couldn't even see his eyes. Um, and his head was way down at the bottom. 
And I thought, you know, you've worked really hard in the corporate world to be who you are. And all of a sudden, and you might say, well, that's just Zoom. Well, what if he was trying to really sell me something and I was qualified? There is no way I was going to buy from him. Yeah. And you know what I do when I'm in these networking meetings, when I, I look at the gallery and I will pick and choose people that I'm going to talk to based on what they look like on the on the. That, that's how we that's how we perceive each other right now in particular in a virtual networking event, virtual meetings, um, w- w- we have that this piece of real estate, which uh, actually we haven't talked about that. We're talking about using cameras. We're talking about using phones uh, and social media, but every interaction that you have on Zoom <laughs> or any other video communication software that you use followed, follows these rules and is an opportunity for you to stand out or be passed on. So the question now, which is uh, the, the, the final part, it's uh, how I want to, uh, to, to go with the final part of this, of this interview, is to talk about but what can we do? So you talk about the tricks of the trades a few times. So tell us, what are some of these trick of the trades that we can use to stand out and uh, be more authoritative and more effective on camera? Okay, to be an authority on video, you really want to have a professional environment around you. So does that mean a virtual background? Now I know you've got something behind you that is really good. Is it a green screen? That's a green screen, yes. Okay, it's done well. Typically, I don't like that stuff, Mm -hmm. typically, because they're usually flipping it. You know how people will disappear behind the screen and stuff, the Zoom things? Okay, so the first thing I would say is get rid of the virtual background unless you can do a green screen really well like you're doing. Yeah, that's that's mainly the difference when using Zoom backgrounds because a Zoom background without a green screen is horrible. I mean, of course, uh, every person is uh, different uh, depending on the space that you have, where you live. Uh, not uh, everywhere is it uh, possible to put a green screen. But uh, if you if you want to go virtual in this way, and you can, there are some even small green screen that you can use, and uh, that will eliminate the fuzziness and actually give a, a crystal clear. But even to find this background, and if you're not if you're just listening to the show, um, then hop on the YouTube video because then you can see actually what we are talking about here. We're talking about video, so hop on YouTube, and if you're listening on the podcast and then uh, 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 you can see what we are talking about. But even to find this particular background, it took me about a year and a half. Uh, I tested different backgrounds for about a year and a half and I changed probably about 20 or 25 of them. And every time I think I was, sometimes I was getting closer. Sometimes it was even worse than the one before. And then I found this one and the feedback from others. I liked it, but the feedback from others were so good that I decided to keep it. So yeah. I got a bit on my soapbox about the green screen. So go, go ahead. So if you, you mentioned though, if you, and I agree with you, if you have the option, don't have a green screen. So what, what do we have instead? What can we have instead? Okay. So, um, and the green screen, you have done it really well. And I will say when I met you in that networking about a few months ago. Yeah. Yes. You were one of the people that clicked check my mark or, uh, you know, I had my check mark of, yeah, I, I passed, to- I passed the, the video test. You did. <laughs> I passed yes. You did. But that's because now I, I don't want people to run out and do a green screen because doing a green screen really badly is worse. I agree with because you. Because there's usually a green halo. You know how yeah. that green halo happens if you're too yeah. close to it. And typically people will have the green screen, um, some some big room that um doesn't is is incongruent with how they're dressed. Yes. It'll be like some New York penthouse and they're dressed in rags. You know what I mean? It's incongruent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. And uh, while we are talking about green screens, uh, one of the reasons why the difference between having the green halo and so on, and that becomes also the space is, is the lighting that you have. Absolutely. I have, I have three, I've got a, a big natural window in front of me uh, and uh, uh, when they, when it's night, I've got, and also on top of that, I've got two r- large ring lights. Yeah. And normally uh, in, in the night, the two large ring lights will do the trick, but yeah. the window is also what makes a big difference. So that's uh, how the quality of the green screen in the image is like this. Otherwise, yeah. you can start seeing green parts. It's not, it's not a great. Yep, yep, yep. 
So that's why I'm saying it take you took a year and a half to figure this out. So my advice to someone who wants to become an authority right now, if you look at my background, I'm standing out just like you're standing out. You're well lit. I'm well lit. I have an accent light on me purposely. See how most people are like, this is a room and now I have light on. It's not very, it's not that, it doesn't yeah. pop, right? Yeah. I have my accent light on placed correctly and it pops. Makes it. And difference. I've got a, a light behind me, some accent, but I've got particularly in, you know, intentionally dark back there. I used to have it light. I have it dark back there because it adds uh, depth but I pop out. So I, I would say the number one thing is to get some sort, and you're saying, well, I can't do that, Suzanne, because my house is cluttered and I don't have any space. You know what? Don't, don't do a white wall because in the industry, that's the worst thing. Ron Howard one time, I heard him say, anything but a white wall, don't shoot into a white wall. Oh, that's awful. Never shoot flat into a white wall. And I thought, you go get them, Ron. You go get them, Ron. But everyone shoots into a white wall. You know what? If that is the only option you have, it's better than a Zoom background. Okay. It's better than one of those awful Zoom things. You can look like a lineup, like you're in a lineup, but at least you're all there. Um, but you know, it doesn't take a whole lot. Shoot it at a 45 degree angle into a corner, added some pictures back there. It's not that hard to set this up when you know some tricks. So what are the tricks? Light yourself better than your background, just like you and I are both doing. We're lit well. How do you light? You light, make sure you, you don't have one ring light. I think the worst thing you can have is one ring light in front of you. I got that. I right. threw it out. Well, I, yeah. I recycled it. Okay. It's all I, I, I was doing that as well. That's why I had two, and I actually have a third one sometimes yep. where I have. Yep one uh, and you can find them uh, um, i'm gonna put the link in the show notes uh, but there are these uh, ring lights that you can attach to a desk uh, or they have these uh, bendable arms that uh, that you yeah. have and i used to have actually sometimes when i didn't have the window i used to have three so i have one in front and two on the sides yeah and uh, uh, that's uh, what made the difference but i remember the first time i did with only one and i had a small ring light like this and it was exactly in front of my face. What yep. you could see on my forehead was this a big halo here on the forehead. Yep. And that's what, where everyone was putting their attention. They were not telling me. And I, 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 my wife looking at this, uh, all I can see is that reflection on the forehead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I'm going to say to the women who are over 40, you overlight yourself, you look younger. Okay, but don't don't get the spotlights out. You got to diffuse them. Uh, you got to have some sort of diffusion on them because you're gonna look have you're gonna look like a horror film if you don't have diffusion on you. So there are some there. You know, you can, it's real easy to make yourself look terrific. The secret is to get some. Okay, not really great equipment, and I I have a example someplace but I did an example in my course I did an example where I sat at my desk with home lamps and light from outside and my laptop camera I took a little video of that and then I took a video out in my studio which was out in the artist retreat at the time and I had a professional setup which wasn't even like I don't know what did I spend on that 150 bucks or something it wasn't much Right. And when you look at my face, my face in the, the professional setup was like really uh, sculpted and pretty as far as what it looked like. And on the desk, it looked like it was kind of like inflamed and bumpy and puffy. And it, I mean, we're talking like do one, same outfit, same makeup, go to the next one. And it's completely different and it's because of the lighting. So, and the camera, and I was able to zoom in correctly. So what kind of camera do you use? Uh, just do you use have a right webcam. Now? Webcam. So that's the, the webcam, which, which, which webcam? Uh, do, you, do you remember? I have a Logitech 9920. C920, yeah, anymore. Logitech C920. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The same they one that I have as well. Either. The same, they yeah, don't make them anymore. No, they don't make them anymore. Really? Well, I mean, this particular number. 
Okay. Okay. That, no, because I have the C920 and uh, um, which, by the way, I'll put also the link in the in the in the show notes because uh, it is uh, a um, it, it makes a huge difference compared to your laptop camera. It Definitely. does yeah. because you can it, zoom in, and so just like uh, when you're talking on your phone, focal length. When you're talking, when you take a selfie, you know your nose can be exaggerated yeah. because you're too close. So you yeah. have to zoom in properly. I even had my niece say, well, look at that girl's nose. And I said, yes, because she's not using her camera right. Oh, I thought she needed a nose job. No, it's because she's not using her camera right. So the first thing is you've got to have a professional environment around you, all right? And experiment with it. Just don't shoot into a white wall and don't get OCD about it. But the other thing is really, um, when I work with people, just little things like smiling. Um, I mean, I, I know, I know, but I, okay. So I'll tell you another story and then I'll leave it at that. Yeah. I had a, um, I went to a workshop back in Florida last year. It was a mastermind and we was a video. We were in a professional video studio and I was just a participant. I wasn't the coach. Well, I, this girl, it was all guys except for two women because that's the typical thing. And um, we'd be, you know, she befriended me and she was young and she got up there and she did her thing in front of the camera and all the guys were just tearing her apart. Oh, you need to smile more. You need more energy. You need to do this. And I'm thinking, this is really bad, stupid advice from people who don't know what they're doing. So I, I couldn't watch it. I left the room, went to the bathroom, and she had asked in the meantime, can I go back out in the hallway and practice? So I came out of the bathroom. There she is. She's practicing. I said, you want me to help you? Yes. Two or three minutes. Two or three minutes. I completely, I taught her how to smile on camera. I told her who to talk to because I have an instinct of, I know after all this time, I know who you should talk to instinctively. I had her drill or eye contact. I, I mean, I just like, boom, 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 send her back in. They were astonished. They said, wow, what happened? I said, we spent two minutes together. Okay, you need to be able to have the right energy. And that takes a little bit more to find because you need an objective eye. But the first start is getting your look at least better. And then delving into, okay, now I look good. Now, what do I say? How do I say it? And how do I keep people engaged? And then we open that kind of that kind of worm, which uh, we, it can be it can be a part two actually on uh, on the podcast. And we could we could arrange a part two on uh, what to say and how to say. But I'm sure that on, on that part, that's also what you help uh, what you help people with, and that's what your courses are about, uh, or the work, the corporate work that you're doing as well. So, uh, Suzanne, if someone wants to work with you, because uh, this uh, interview has been has been incredible, from uh, the the mistakes, uh, the, the the challenges about you know the perception, the internal perception, and mental dialogue that we have that stops us, uh, stop men and women from uh, um, getting on camera, to the mistakes that uh, simple mistakes that we're making, to the the, the tips uh, and that you gave us right now. It's been brilliant. So if someone wants to know more, say, actually, uh, I would love to work with you or find out more. What's the best way? Okay, well, um, I have a book I can give away. And even though it's geared to women who are in their midlife, men are buying it. Men are getting it. It's like, I'm, I think I'm getting more men getting it than I have women getting it. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Because my, what I do is I have a system. Obviously, I have a system. And it goes from camera anxiety to what to say, to how to deliver, to how to do the tech, to how to do it, but also how to market. And my, my newest angle is using video to enable a sales team to shorten the sales cycle. So what that means is in sales enablement, you put a video in front and you've now saved time for your sales team. So I have a formula that seems to be getting some attention. So you want me to give out my book? Absolutely, that would be great. How can people okay. get it? SuzanneGlover.com forward slash free book. And I'll spell it. Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E, 
Glover, G L O V as in Victor, E R dot com forward slash free, F R E E book, F B O O K, <laughs> free book. Suzanneglover.com <laughs> forward slash free book. <laughs> Suzanneglover.com forward slash free book. The link is also in the show notes alongside Suzanne social media account so then you can connect and different social media you can visit oh, their website yeah. LinkedIn as well. is the best perfect it will be the linkedin account there will be the linkedin link uh, in the show notes uh, or in the comment section uh, or in the description depending on where you're watching um this uh, or in the website page uh, you, as long as you scroll down you will find it uh, there will be the links of the book uh, linkedin profile and also the website um, Suzanne, uh, what I would love to do is to wrap up with a final thought, the interview that we had today. So what will be your final thought, uh, wrapping up the conversation that we had? I just want people to think that they can do this, that they can do this because they don't have to be anybody but themselves. They can all do this deep, deep, in, deep, deep inside. They all have what it takes to do this. I have done this. I have taught this. I have seen people blossom. And I will leave this because I forgot to tell you the name of my book is Be a Video Influencer, but it's about how to reinvent your life and your business as a midlife movie star. And I'll leave you with this quick story. Sally was a gal who came to me. She was a manager in a dental office. Her life had fallen apart at midlife because she was having hormone issues and all sorts of things. She went to bed for two years, ate TV dinners, went to the doctor. He said she should be dead by her labs. She came to me, we worked together for a little while. And before you know it, she went to an acting convention, pulled out her violin, did comedy. She'd never done comedy before and hadn't played her violin in years and did a little, you know, Jack Benny kind of routine. She placed second in that she performed in front of hundreds of people. And she said in her testimonial, I never dreamt I could do this. I feel like I have more self-respect and love for myself because I can look people in the eye now and feel like I'm good enough. So it's a journey to embrace because you are good enough. You just have to pull it out of yourself. And what a, you can do what it. a fantastic story. What a fantastic story. What a fantastic transformation and a great way also to end this interview. So Susan, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for your time. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for listening or watching. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe straight away. And also leave us a review. Let us know what you enjoyed about this particular episode. And the uh, reviews, remember, are the life and blood of every show. They're good for the guests. They're good for the podcast. They're good for my ego. So <laughs> make sure you give us a five-star review. <laughs> and uh, until next time, always remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.